Hi, this is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta. I'm recording this video to show you how easy it is for you to construct your own population pyramid for any town of really any reasonable size in the United States. I'm talking maybe just a couple thousand folks or, or more. Um, we're going to do that by using the United States Census Bureau's uh, new data website as of the last few years called data.census.gov. You can see that website here, and <laughs> it starts out with a search bar, um, and not much more than that. Um, and the key to uncovering the census data is knowing what to search for. So we're going to look for the elements that construct a population pyramid. The first one of those is age, because a population pyramid talks about how many people there are of a particular age in a particular place. The second thing we're gonna be looking for is uh, what the Census Bureau calls sex. Um, that is identification of people that it calls males and females. So, if we look at age and sex, here we go. We've got um, some results for age and sex. And the top one there, table S0101, how easy to remember, is the table that we're looking for. Now, these are going to be results um, from the American Community Survey, which is an annual effort to go out into communities across the nation and to collect information to characterize what's going on with those communities. You'll notice under product up here, it's showing a one-year estimate, uh, and that's fine for, say, New York City, Minneapolis, Minnesota, or even a mid-sized place like uh, Chillicothe, Ohio. But it's not going to be enough to really look at small towns. And for that, what we're going to want to use is five-year estimates. What five-year estimates do is they start with the year that you're talking about, 2019, and then they go back an additional four years. So 2019, 18, 17, 16, 15. That's five years, 2015 to 2019. I'm recording this in spring of 2021. Why don't we have 2020 data yet? Because it takes a little time to gather that data, to process it, make sure it's all accurate, We'll be getting that 2020 data uh, in September of uh, or October of 2021. So 2019 is the latest year for which data is available. If you wanted to go back in time, you could. Notice the scroll bar here. But I'm going to use today the five-year estimates subject tables so I can look at towns that are both large and small. Notice what we've got here. We have the elements already of <coughs> a population pyramid, which typically works in uh, five-year increments. And that's exactly what we have here until we get to 85 and older. And there are so few people there that it's typically aggregated at 85 and above. We also have information on counts for males and counts for females. Great, that's exactly what you need to produce the classic shape of a population pyramid. But if we wanna look at a town, we certainly don't wanna stop here because if you look right under the gray bar, you'll see United States listed. That means this is for the entire country. And another clue is the total population of 324,697,795 people. Whew. That's a large population. It's not a population of an individual city or town. So to get down to a lower level, we're, we're going to want a customized table. And uh, when we are interested in doing that, if we're looking for a geographic place, we want to focus on that geo tag. So I'm going to click on that geo tag. And I am going to be looking for 
a county subdivision under geography. And then I'm going to want to select any state. I'm choosing the state of Maine because that's where I live. And then let's say, let's look in Lincoln County. And within Lincoln County, you can choose any number of places, both big <clears throat> and small. So why don't we pick a couple of towns and do some comparison, right? That'd be a lot of fun. You could play with that. You could look at all the towns in a county as well. That would be fun. For this example, I'm just going to stick with one. Um, let's take a look at Booth Bay Harbor, a big summer tourist um, uh, location with a lot of boats going out. Um, so we can close there and you'll see all of a sudden that the summary name here is no longer the United States, but it says Booth Bay Harbor Town in Lincoln County, Maine. So that's lovely. We still have, it's always good to check, counts for all the age possibilities and both sex possibilities. Um, that's wonderful. So instead of copying and pasting this to work with it, we're going to want to download it. And let's download it in a format that um, uh, a spreadsheet can work with. I'm going to show you first how to work with this and create a population pyramid in Microsoft Excel, and then how you can create a population pyramid in um, <clears throat> um, Google Sheets, uh, which is uh, a spreadsheet in the Google Docs uh, suite that is available to anyone with a, a Google, free Google account. So first, let's export to Excel. And I'm going to want to open that. And so now I'm waiting for Microsoft Excel to load up, and then my data is going to appear. I'm going to need to click a few buttons in order to get it all to work. Uh, and the key one here is that I do want to be able to, um, excuse me, to enable editing. We want to make sure that we can work with this data. So. Now you've got some information here. It's reminding you that it's the American Community Survey five-year estimate subject tables. Wonderful. You're almost ready to go here, but in a sense, you've got too much to make um, a uh, <clears throat> really nice population pyramid from. It's uh, just a whole lot of, of information. What's important is to um, notice a few things. The first is the information you need. You've got your labels for age groups right here in column A. You've got counts for males in column F, counts for females, column J. But notice when I start to play with them, I'm getting this little tiny um, warning sign. What does it say? Oh, it says it is a number stored as text. I want it to be numbers. I want to convert this to numbers. So I'm going to do that. Whew. Okay, and it looks like I'm going to have to do that again over here um, for the estimates for mail and I'm going to convert that to number. That's important because when you graph it, you don't want it graphed as if it was text, right? You want it graphed as if it, if it, if it, as if it was, excuse me, an actual number. So we want to convert that there. Okay, I think we are almost, almost ready to go. Um, one other problem though that's up here is that you have the, United States Census Bureau trying to be really helpful to you by creating this overarching label, but do you notice how it doesn't actually match the columns? 
that are here. So it's one cell that stretches column F and column G. And you want to be able to make sure that you have a good, consistent um, header that you will use. That is a tag to remind you which numbers are associated, in this case, with males and which with females. So I'm going to enter that right above the data so that I can use it in a chart. Typically, when the Census Bureau or some other agency does something clever like combining cells in order to look lovely, it's not easy to work with. So I'm reproducing the labels a bit lower. And now it's time for us to create a, this population pyramid. And if you've ever looked at a population pyramid, you'll notice that um, it's essentially a bar chart that is extending out in two directions um, with a number of bars going up, right? So you have uh, verticality indicating age. So we want age to be in the y-axis. And then we want numbers for males and numbers for females to be in the x-axis, the horizontal axis. But the thing about a population pyramid is that the numbers go in different directions. Now, how can we possibly do, do that? Um, one simple trick um, to make that work is to change the direction of the numbers. So um, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. If you think about the number line, right, uh, there are positive numbers going in one direction and negative numbers going in another. So I'm, I'm just picking one of the sexes here. I'm going to go with male. Um, let's take these numbers and make them go in another direction. To do that, I'm going to use, um, I could simply type in the negative equivalent, because there aren't that many numbers. So I could type in minus 9, minus 35, minus 28, and so on. But um, in this case, and let me make this a little bit larger so that you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, I could also use um, uh, a little bit of math, which is simple. I could enter an equal sign, which means I'm going to use a, a, a math. I'm going to use a formula. And my formula for what's going to be in this cell is minus 1 times what's in the cell to the right, which is if I look at the uh, row, uh, row and column headers, it will be G6 minus 1 times G6. And then there's minus 1 times equals minus 1 times G7 and so on. Um, luckily, in Microsoft Excel and also in, in Google Sheets, which we'll use later on, if you drag down a formula, it will apply it to rows beneath. So there we go. We have our nice negative numbers. Now we're ready to make our chart. Um, it's not that hard. Um, what's important when making this chart is to do so in a really systematic way. So what that means for me, excuse me, is that um, I'm going to want to start with a bar chart. And so I'm heading over here to the icon that says insert column or bar chart. I want to do a 2D bar. Um, and I'm going to uh, just start right there. Now, this is going to be a relatively empty bar chart. It doesn't make any sense yet. What I need to do is to put in some data and to select it in a way that makes all of those elements show up just as I wanted it to, as I wanted them to, excuse me. So I want age to be vertical. I want to have estimates for male counts and female counts in this town of Booth Bay Harbor. And I want them to go in different directions, which I think I've already uh, managed by creating a negative uh, male uh, uh, count right there. So now how to make this chart that I've inserted make sense. I'm right clicking and then going to select data. 
And I don't know what this information is that was included, but I'm going to remove it because it doesn't make sense to me. Instead, I'm going to want to um, uh, look here at um, Legend Series, and I'm going to want to put in the series or places where you can put multiple lines of, of, of data. Um, I'm going to give that series name. Um, I'm going to head back up here. Um, this value, and I'm going to do that by clicking on the cell. So it's going to be using G5 for the name of this series of data. And then I'm going to go delete whatever's in there. And then I'm going to click that little arrow. And then I'm going to, whoops, not these. These are the positive numbers. I'm going to select these negative numbers right here so that the, the male uh, uh, numbers are going probably to the left, like good negative numbers should do. And then I'll hit OK. Now I'm going to add another series. And the other series is going to be called, I'm going to click that number, or that little uh, arrow, and then I'm going to click female. And then I'll click that entry again. Okay, so there it is. And the series values are going to be similar. I'm deleting everything that was in there, then I'm using that up arrow, and I'm going to select all those values. And there that is. Oh, and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm just going to click OK for a moment, just so you, just so you can see that. <laughs> and drag it over. OK, lovely. I've got, I've got some numbers here. <laughs> and some of them are heading to the left, and some of them are heading to the right. That's good. But unfortunately, I don't have labels for what the different vertical levels mean. So I need to go back to select data, and I need to uh, include some axis labels. And so, pardon me, I'm going to click on Edit, and then I'm going to select all of those labels. Okay, and then I'm going to hit OK. And let's see what happened. OK, nice. They have, the, the text is there. You might not be able to see it because it's a bit too small, but we can fix that pretty quickly by just simply dragging on these corner arrows Right, and that will make it uh, a little larger so that we all can see it. And once it is of a significantly large size, um, one of the things I can do is I can start to change the uh, text elements. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean particularly is as, as long as I have clicked on this graphic um, and I head to home, um, I can change the size of the font. I can change it to go up to 16 font. Oh, that's lovely. How about 18 font? Okay, now that's fairly unmistakable. Um, you can even read right through the blue bars. Um, and, and it's in the right order from under five years to 85 years and over. Um, I'm not quite done yet, though, because um, nobody really understands what I have here. Okay. Um, so I need some descriptors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to chart design up at the top, and I'm going to add a few chart elements on the left. A uh, nice chart title above the chart will help me out here. Um, I need to scroll the data down a little bit. So the chart title has a little room. A little bit of room and then I'm going to delete the words chart title and type in something new which is a description of what it is a population pyramid for um, Booth Bay Harbor American Community Survey 2015 to 2019 
oh, maybe I need to make that text a little bit smaller so it can fit. So I'm going to take it down to 18 size, 18 font. And that's a nice 18 font too. So that's lovely. Okay, what else do I need? I need some information about what the heck blue is and what the heck red is. Who knows what blue and red are? For that, I want to go up to the top, select chart design again, and simply add a chart element. And it's called a legend that is going to include the labels for the, the two different categories, the blues and the reds, which frankly, I don't know what they are right now. I need to know. So let's put it over on the right. Oh, good thing. We Now we know that the red is <coughs> female, the blues are males. That makes sense since the males are headed in this negative direction, which is something that we set. Um, what about those numbers down at the bottom? What do they mean? These ones going down to negative 150 and over to the right, all the way over to 200, which is a little lopsided, right? Nothing actually crosses the 150 line. But I'm going to fix that in a few ways. I'm going to click, right click on the axis and then select format axis. And I'm going to change the maximum axis over here on the right to 150 to match what's on the left. It won't cut off any data because I see none of them cross the 150 line. Oh, that's nice. That's a little bit more centered. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, take that sidebar out by clicking on the X. Okay, now I need a label for that X axis saying what it is. So I'm going to go back to add chart element under chart design. I need an axis title for the primary horizontal axis. Ugh. And I'm going to type it first, and I'm going to say, uh, population size in town. By age, category. And now the axis is kind of overlapping with the, with the numbers on the x-axis, but that's okay because I can take these little dots and I can click on them and then drag up. Great, to get that, um, that axis, the set of axis labels off of the title for the axis. When I did that though, you notice something happened. It stopped showing all of the, the, the year labels. So how do I fix that? Well, one solution would be to enlarge the <laughs> graphic, and, and that did it, okay? But if I didn't want to do that or I couldn't do that, the other thing I could do is I could make the, uh, uh, the axis labels a little bit smaller. And I do that by clicking on that text, and now you can see a box is around it. And I could take it from 18 down to 16. Will that fix it? Sure it will. Is that largely readable? Yeah, largely it is. So now, what can I do? I can take this um, in Microsoft Excel, and I can use it as a graphic. Um, and I can cut and paste it into anything. I could cut and paste it into um, uh, an Adobe Photoshop file. I could cut it and paste it into a word processor, anything. Uh, how do I get it into the clipboard? I'm going to right click. I'm using Windows. If you're using Apple, you know the, the there must be a, a, a similar thing you can do to bring up that context menu. I'm going to hit copy. And then if I wanted to, I could put it in a Microsoft Word document, perhaps one that hypothetically I was going to use as a place to talk a little bit about what's going on in Booth Bay Harbor. And I could, you know, type my name and some text for introduction. And then the place I wanted to put it, um, I could just put my cursor there. And then I literally just hit paste. I could click paste here, 
or I could use the key combination control V and watch what happens. Oh, a little bit of a disaster. It's put its own colors in, right? It's trying to be smart, but that's okay. We're going to help it fix it. Um, there are a few ways to work with that. One is with layout. Um, we can make the margins a little bit smaller so that the um, graphic can then expand into the space. We can click on it, and because Microsoft Word works with Excel very well, it's going to allow us to work within the limits here. Um, we can make this a taller graphic, and then we can move those pieces out where we need them to be. Okay. Often with the legend, you need to enlarge it again to make things show up again. Okay. This is not too bad. We have the same problem that occurred then again, in which um, the uh, labels are not appearing, all of them for all the categories. So I'm going to take that size back down to say 15. Did that work? How about 14? Okay, 14. That works for us. Um, and now I have my population pyramid uh, in which for each age category, I have an indication of how many there are. Notice in the town of Booth Bay Harbor, this is a relatively inverted population pyramid in which the most common age groups ha, are, are, are those of AARP years of 50 and older, and especially retired years, right? And look at the number of, of uh, women uh, we can roll over, scroll over, and we can make sure that we, what it says is going on is what's actually being referred to. Um, that women 85 years and older, that there are 146 of them. Whereas uh, uh, little girls age five to nine years old, there's only seven who live in the town. Wow, what a distinction. This is what happens in a retirement town uh, that is also a tourist town. Um, there are a lot of people that go there to retire. Um, uh, and young people, uh, they live in other towns in Maine by the look of it. You have something to write about here, especially if you compare it to another town. Um, I can go back in, and it's always good to go in and check. Um, so I'm going to move this graphic to the side a little bit, and I'm going to make sure five to nine years old. Yes, we're talking about seven females age five to nine. And yes, we are talking about 146 uh, women aged 85 years and older that live in the town. Um, that's really interesting and a very distinctive population pyramid for this town. Now, what if we wanted to do this and we didn't have Microsoft Excel? Well, I'm just going to delete this and we're going to have to start all the way over again. I'm going to download here from our table from Booth Bay Harbor and um, I'm going to, instead of downloading Excel, I'm going to export to CSV. CSV stands for Comma Separated Values, um, which is a way of drawing a spreadsheet using text only that any spreadsheet can use. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to export to CSV. Uh, I'm going to want to save that file because we're going to pretend I don't have Microsoft Excel right now. And that's going to be in my downloads folder. Now, I'm going to head over to drive.google.com, which is a place where all of my Google Docs and spreadsheets are, and I'm going to create a new Google Sheet, okay, by clicking plus new and then Google Sheets. Okay. So can I import that CSV file? I bet I can. Uh, I can do that by clicking File, Import, and then going to Upload and selecting a file from my device. Now I'm going to go to Downloads, and I'm going to find it. Here it is, that CSV file. Um, all those commas in there are separating cells from one another. And I'm going to hit Open.
and I'm going to import that data, convert text to numbers and dates and formulas. Let's import it and see what happens. Oh, lovely. Okay, there's the same information. Um, <clears throat> so let's create something similar. And we're going to do that by clicking on Insert and Chart. Okay, now it's trying to include all kinds of crazy stuff here, right? Um, so I don't want a scatter chart. I'd like a bar chart, please. There we go, a nice bar chart. And I don't want any stacking of that. Um, here's my data range. Okay, so I want a few data ranges. Uh, This is getting a little complicated, isn't it? So, but here's one data range. Uh, that for, uh, here we go, for the females. And then there's gonna be another one. I'm gonna click on that other one for males. Uh, and that's F. Uh, work to 21. Okay, and now I'm going to click OK. Uh, it tells me I have no data. Oh, what a mess. Okay, so that uh, option didn't work, but don't worry, there's always another option. Um, in Google Sheets, I'm going to add a tab, and I'm going to put this data together in a way that is nice and neat and organized. And hopefully, Google Sheets will recognize what's going on. So I do that by clicking the plus in the lower left. And then here's my new sheet. And you see these tabs at the bottom? I can click back and forth between them. Now, let's take these age labels. Ha, ah, beautiful. Let's take these labels here, and I'm checking this is the male estimate. Okay, and so I'm gonna place these here, and I'm gonna give that the title male. <laughs> and then we're gonna take, we're gonna need the header female, and let's just copy those over right here. I'm copying, uh, selecting, and then hitting copy also control c you can do that with the keyboard and paste control v now that looks relatively safer and saner the one thing i do need to do here is create negative numbers for the males i could also make the females negative but uh, i think uh, women have too much negativity in this world so as it is so I'm going to do it for the guys. We're going to give you the negative numbers. And 103, 76, 65. I could also use a formula like I did before, 31 and 38. And now I'm going to select all of these. And I'm going to hope that when I insert chart, it recognizes what's going on a little bit better. Oh, well, would you look at that? That's almost perfect. It's beautiful. It's got different colors. Um, it's recognizing that some of the bars share categories. There's just one problem. It's even got male and female color coded for me. The problem is that under five is supposed to be at the bottom and 85 years and up is supposed to be at the top. So what can I do about that? Well, I can head over to the right where it has options and I can click customize. And then when it comes to the vertical axis, that's what I wanna mess with. I'm gonna click that little uh, uh, arrow and then this all this stuff will pop down. And look at that, reverse axis order. Oh, perfect. I've got a lovely chart. Uh, it's got, uh, already here, uh, a title here, male and female is a little bit prosaic, so I'm going to double click on that and then start typing in population pyramid. Uh, 
for Booth Bay Harbor, Maine, 2015 to 2019 American Community Survey. Oh, that might be a bit too much. Oh, no, it automatically adjusted. How nice. And uh, what else do we need? We need that X axis, don't we? So um, how could I do that? I could take a look at uh, right clicking and then look at chart and axis titles. How about a horizontal axis title? Oh, and there's an option for a horizontal axis title. And we could call that um, population by age and sex if we wanted to. And my goodness, there it appears. Now we can do the same thing that we did uh, with the uh, Microsoft Excel chart here. Um, we could copy and paste this out. I'm going to take a look at these three dots and see what it suggests that we could do. Why, well, there's an option to copy the chart. So I copied it. And what happens if I want to put this in a word processor? Why, well, there it goes. And I can certainly write all about it right here. So it's really not hard to create a population pyramid. It'll probably take you less time than I did because I was showing you all the options. Um, the key, if you run into trouble, like I did with um, Google Sheets and, and the insertion of that chart, is to simplify, simplify, simplify. Simplify the data down, take the data you want and put it in a nice little area where it's all next to each other, and then the computer will work on it uh, a little bit more sensibly. Um, you could play with working with Excel, which every University of Maine and Augusta student has access to for free. If you want to know uh, how to access it, I can send you the link for that. Um, you can also use Google Sheets, with which anybody with a, a Google account can make full use of. Um, I hope this is helpful. If you want to generate this social structure that's showing the demographic um, uh, picture in a nutshell of uh, any town in the United States, um, best of luck in your own uh, investigations and your own visualization of social structures in your town or somebody else's town.